it's 10 20. we didn't get out we got out of the house a tiny bit late so we didn't get here till like 804 but uh the we're at the bins the hara the hara. the hara how was that last round for you meh meh i think i grabbed two things so you're not overly excited about stuff you got today no i spent 36 bucks if that's any indication that's about what you normally spend so mm, i usually spend less than that but this time i got i put my bag on there it said 19 pounds and i go up to pay and she said 26 something i was like that doesn't, that doesn't math out right i was like whatever paid for it looked at my receipt i think she only put in 14 pounds i'm like all right cool thanks Thanks for the free stuff. The screamy lady likes you. Apparently. I don't think she did that on purpose. I doubt she did it on purpose, but maybe she does like me. Screamy lady. Okay, cool. Uh, it's already, well, it's 94 degrees, it says, but it's supposed to hit like 110, 111, 112. Yeah, our car's also a little bit in the shade right now. A little bit, a little bit, but I got some good stuff in there. I'm excited to show some of the stuff that I got. I got a couple things I got that, I, uh, that I'm excited about. Um, a lot of bread and butter today, but yeah, um, I might show some good things this week in general. And then there's one thing I found today that if it's real, I bought it anyway. But if it's real, it could be good. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Ooh, ooh. There was a lot of vintage today. A lot of vintage out there. Not stuff that all stuff to get, but I've been seeing a lot of vintage lately. Um, mm -hmm. There was a kid in there. Somehow Vicky didn't see him because she probably would have murdered him. But it was this kid, maybe ten. Seriously, like way too much energy and was like but like darting in and yanking stuff like it was something crazy and it was, I, I was just like I don't know when it was happening right now and then like throwing it across and then at one point he was literally fully inside a bin like rolling around and I'm like I'm pretty sure this is not okay and I was just like like there's you know, you're right I, I keep my head down I don't really pay attention she didn't to notice and I'm like clearly he wasn't near her because had he been she would have been like she probably would have yelled at him but uh you know I, I don't down. mind kids being at mother? the bins but when they're running wild it's a little obnoxious because I mean I get it, it's just a place some people are just there to shop for themselves but for me it's like I'm there I'm working mm -hmm. so I mean I can't make other people respect my workplace but it still is a little obnoxious when it's like you're having to deal with a kid, I don't know, rolling around in the bins. Yeah, it's... And like, um, where's their parent? Well, I mean, the parents probably, they're doing nothing. Or they decide that this is the new babysitting area and they drop their Seriously. kids off. Maybe. Well, he was way too young. I think he was there with a the parent. <laughs> but uh, I do like, there's a couple of young kids who come in who are probably like maybe... 14 at most. Yeah, but they're respectful. That that I like seeing because there's just one kid that I see in here every day. And I'm like, his parents must love it because he's here just every day, all day with the t-shirt bros. And I see them like kind of teaching him stuff and telling him stuff and, and he is respectful. And I, I just think it's cool that he's got this thing that he's into mm -hmm. that uh, he's learning about. He's, he's going to be the super cool kid that goes back to school in the fall with all his knowledge and these super yeah. cool fits. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys, tell us in the comments down below, what do you think, what's your feeling about Kids of the Bins? I think it can be good, it can be bad. Also, there was a really cute baby today, so that was, we had, we both appreciated that because she was real cute. I mean, probably wouldn't have been appreciated if she was screaming the whole time, but she wasn't. She was no, she, was, she had a kind of a grumpy face half the time. I did get her to smile once, and I caught her smiling at me. Um, but yeah, so tell us, what, what do you think about Kids of the Bins? Or thrift stores in general when you're trying to source, man. I don't know. All right. All right. What are we doing? Are we going to get coffee? Are we getting breakfast? What are we doing? Breakfast. Breakfast. And then we'll show you guys what we got. Hey, everybody. It is Saturday morning, and we just got back from the bins. Uh, it was our, what, third trip this week? Yes. And so what also came this week is a box of clothing that I sourced while we were in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago. Um, I went to an estate sale with our friend Wendy at like seven o'clock in the morning, left the hotel, went to an early estate sale while Katie lounged around in bed. And uh, unfortunately, the estate sale had started like an hour before we got there and I missed out on a ton of amazing vintage clothing. However, I was able to still get quite a bit. So um, the biggest caveat with this, I would say, is that everything is super tiny, like vintage is. So this is all gonna be best for like extra small. Um, Everything was $5 an item, and I had Teresa box it up and ship it to me from um, Phoenix, and it cost $20 to ship everything. So basically, it was like $115 for everything. 
Um, this is the first thing. So this is a vintage 70s denim look dress. It's not denim, it's more of a, um, like a muslin, maybe even a linen blend. Uh, and it has this really cool red rope belt that goes with it. And these little epaulots on the, sh on the shoulders. Super tiny, navy blue, in very good shape though with like the red piping. This is a little faded, but I still think it's a pretty cool belt. I'm just gonna loop it here so I don't lose it. And that will go, I mean, it'll probably, like I said, I paid $5. It's probably, this is a bread and butter piece, so probably like a $40 dress. Uh, this is also from Phoenix. So this is, again, vintage, uh, probably this is in 70s as well, maybe 60s. Uh, cute little Swiss dot with the contrast trim and, um, and sash at the waist. Um, this has a rear zipper and these kind of almost, they're short sleeves, but they're a little bit, not quite three quarter sleeves, a little bit longer, a little poofy sleeve there. Uh, and I'll probably again, sell these in that, like I said, almost everything here, I think is going to be the 30 to $40 range. Uh, no huge ticket amounts, but never know. I might find a brand and look it up and change my mind. Um, this, I actually got two of these. This is the H bar C Western wear. This is a pretty cool shirt. So this is a vintage seventies. It's kind of, um, I mean, it's women's, but it really could be unisex with these big medallion buttons in the v-neck and the western dip in the back it's velour and this is kind of a, a muted red color so this one might be a little bit more i might list this around 75 and see what happens i actually got two of these so there's one in that color and then there's one in this bright teal which is pretty cool so maybe on 75 bucks a piece cool pullovers um Okay, so this is similar to the first one. This is very um, cottage core, prairie core, all that stuff. Rear zipper, 70s, maybe even late 60s. This is a denim dress with kind of a lace overlay in the front. Very Western wear, super cute. Um, all of these clothes are in really nice condition, by the way. They were all hanging on racks in the, in the closets, so it was pretty cool. Um, this one I might list like around 75 or so. This one, as basic as it is, is one of my favorites. This is a very uh, 70s disco style polyester dress. This is just a fuzzy. Um, with like a full skirt. This is all polyester. And it has kind of this ruffle off the shoulder bib front with uh, it's sleeveless, but this drapes over the shoulders. And then it has the rear zipper in the back. Again, these are all kind of tiny, but this is one of my favorite ones as far as the style. Super pretty, great dancing dress. Um, you know, probably $50 range. This is the one, I have two that have damage and this is one of them, but I couldn't leave it behind because I figured no one was gonna take it. So this is uh, actually 50s or 60s. This is actually probably 50s. This is the brand Soubrette with the metal rear zipper. And it's a pleated uh, fit and flare dress. It means it's fitted on the top and flares on the skirt. This has some staining and it also has some pretty uh, vivid discoloration in the underarms. So, I mean, this might've been a lost cause. I don't know. I may just sell it as a damaged item uh, as is and sell it in the $30 range as the matching belt. Uh, and just be happy that it didn't get thrown away. Uh, this is a vintage 70s, almost polyester, 70s, early 80s actually on this one. This button um, neckline or collar line was very indicative of the early 80s. They had this on like a lot of sweaters and blouses and things like that. So it's got some poofy uh, balloon sleeves and an elastic waist, just a simple knit dress. Again, probably in the $40 range. This one is a little older as well. This is a 50s, I would say, maybe even early 60s. Just a velvet dressy dress um, in really nice shape, but so tiny, so tiny. So it's this red velvet with a deep sash and it's satin lined metal rear zipper. Um, it is not handmade. There is some remnants of tags in here. 
and it is one that probably hasn't been laundered, so it does have some underarm marks. I will not attempt to clean this because of the fabric type. I'll just disclose that. And again, super tiny, so $50 or so. This is another one that I love. This is a 70s, um, like look at these great bat wing sleeves right here. This is a 70s uh, like hippie boho type of blouse with, uh, it's like faux leather right there. It's like faux suede. It's just a cool look. Um, deep V-neck to be very, uh, very Stevie Nicks-esque. So I might list this at like 50 or 60 actually. Let's see. This is um, vintage, also probably 60s or 70s. All the buttons up the front. This is a really, really heavy kind of. I don't really know what kind of fabric this is. It's like a. It's almost like a linen, but uh, muslin maybe. Very, very heavy and thick. That's the brand Gay Gibson. Rear matching zipper, so this is probably 60s, early 70s. And then it has this little like rickrack braiding detail with um, velvet ribbon, red velvet ribbon on the sleeves and also along the hem. Pretty dressed considering the size and the color, it's not dirty, it's not damaged. Um, so maybe I'll put it in the $65, $75 range. This is very Jackie O, so this is, those of you that watched my talk at um, Camp Listing Party, this is very 60s indicative of, of um, Jackie O and the Kennedys and that type of um, sedate mod look. Uh, this is a really nice jacket dress in like a black, in a navy blue, but it's kind of like a boucle fabric. Um, it's textured, really pretty. There's again remnants of the tag, it is not, um, handmade. And one more basic 70s polyester kind of, uh, this is very basic Little House on the Prairie in the 70s with all the browns and beiges. Big pockets, elastic waist or drawstring elastic waist. Um, the elastic is not shot, it's nylon on the top and kind of like a faux suede on the skirt and with the accents. So probably 50, 60 bucks on that one. Uh, let's see, I also picked up a couple of pairs of boots. Uh, they had a ton of vintage shoes there. The thing is that this woman had teeny tiny feet. Uh, everything was like a size five or a size six, which makes them very hard to sell. So I left behind a lot of great shoes, uh, but I did grab these. I thought they were a little too hard to pass up. These are vintage 70s um, Minnetonka leather and suede moccasins. They still, the brand still exists, but the older ones are a little bit more collectible than others. And so there's these, the short ones, and then the tall ones. Very popular in the 70s, very, very, very hippie. So hopefully someone that has tiny feet will like these. Let's see. Okay, so this is my, these are my two wounded birds that I got from this, uh, well, another one, two, two more I should say. This is, I didn't notice it until I got it home very darkly discolored. It looks like it was like exposed to some heat. Maybe it was packed next to a heater or something. I don't know if that will come out. If it can come out, it's just polyester. This is the best fabric to try. So I will be trying that. And then it has this um, semi-attached uh, wool plaid vest and uh, belted accent too. So worst case scenario, if I can't clean the dress, I'm gonna sell the belt and the vest by itself. So it's not completely unsalvageable. And then this I did pay $10 for actually. So this is one of my favorite pieces, but uh, it also is pretty stained. I've got to treat it. You can see that it's got all kinds of, I don't even know what the heck that was inside. I'm not sure I want to know. Uh, stains inside, but it's a heavily embroidered satin quilted um, robe, a very long robe. Um, and it's Asian. It has the Asian um, embroidery on it. So probably Japanese or Chinese, depending on where it was purchased. And it does have the matching belt in the pocket. So it does need to be cleaned, but this type of fabric is machine washable. So I'm gonna do my best. And how much will you sell it for? I think I'll probably sell this one for like 200. 
if wow. I can get it clean enough. Um, it's really, really nice. Okay, so that's it for the Phoenix haul. I'll show you a little bit of what I got today. Not everything. Um, I didn't get a ton today. This was actually my smallest haul I, that I can remember from uh, the bins. It was a little bit lackluster for me today, although there was quite a lot of vintage being put out. I just wasn't fast enough. So uh, first, this actually came from our friend Britt. Britton uh, brought this over yesterday. He found it at the bins. Uh, this is a vintage 60s or so, maybe even early 70s, a wool blend plaid uh, shirt dress, which is awesome. And it's actually in a bigger size. I really like this a lot. It's just kind of scratchy. Um, but I'll probably list that for about 75. He's like, I don't do women's clothes. I don't want to do women's clothes. I found this and thought of you, so I appreciate it. Um, okay, so from today, I got these Levi's big size black cargo shorts. We all know how I feel about cargo shorts, but the reality is, is they are here to stay. So these are made in China and actually they're 90s. So these are vintage 90s. Um, and that's exactly what we're looking for in the cargo short arena. So probably 40, 50 bucks. Uh, this vintage Chaps Ralph Lauren, this is like 70s, early 80s Ralph Lauren label. Um, it feels kind of grimy. It definitely has to be washed, but I bought it just because it's a basic men's plaid shirt. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if it says where it was made. Not a, no, it does not. Uh, Douglas Plush, I always pick these up. They sell really well and they sell fairly quickly. This is just a cute little kitty cat. Meow, meow. Um, let's see if her name is on here, here. Sometimes they put the name of the animal. Penelope. Do you think her name is Penelope? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not old, it was made in 2020. Uh, but I think I can probably get like 30 bucks for it. Okay, Barbie core, the Barbie movie, all that. We've been talking about this for a while and I'm sure those of you that are on social media are seeing it everywhere. Uh, all the girls and the little girls and older girls and it's all about the TikTok and Instagram and Barbie wear and Barbie outfits and Barbie clothing. Everybody wearing it to the movie premiere next week. This is a vintage 80s Jody of California um, dress. It's kind of like a faux, no, it's a real wrap, a little wrap dress. And it's just super cute Barbie pink and not an extra small. So I'm gonna to try to get that listed as soon as possible. I may even photograph it and list it myself just to get it up there. Um, these are just Madewell, Madewell jeans. <clears throat> Madewell doesn't sell as well as it did when it first came out. It was a bit of a, a trend. But uh, these are a crop, they're called, the style is the vintage crop jean and they're size eight and they're, uh, it's a fashionable cut. So I think I can get a quick, you know, 30 bucks out of them. Uh, I did find this vintage tie triangle bikini um, and it's in, it's brown and yellow. What decade? Mm, I mean, the tag scream 70s to me, but I'm not entirely sure. I think it might just be a retro brand. As a matter of fact, it's not 70s because there's a dot com. So I guess probably 90s, early 2000s. I'm gonna take a little look. Uh, but it's a cute vintage look and obviously it cost me like 35 cents. So even if I get 30 bucks out of it, it's worth it. I did get some vintage um, men's shirts. This is not one of them, I don't think. This is not vintage, no, but just a Stetson Western shirt. Again, Western wear always sells. It's got the Fleur de Lis. Yep, it's and nice. the Pearl Snap, it's a nice one. I actually just sold an Ariat one I think I showed a week or two ago. I just sold that for $40, which is right where I expected it to be. This is another vintage. Uh, this is Guess. Nice. Made in Hong Kong, 80s Guess. It's a nice chambray button front shirt in like it's a, a women's. cool. Yeah, it is women's actually. I think that's why one of the bros threw it back. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Vintage 80s drawstring bathing suit shorts. Ooh, those are cool. I didn't even see that. Um, those are nice. Yeah, they're cool. I want to see that tag again that tag, the, on the back. I love it. That's cool. Like 30, 40 bucks. Those don't send, tend to sell for as much as I would like. Uh, okay, so I've got a vintage 90s um, Christian Dior 
monsieur Ooh. type of uh, oui, oui. button-up shirt. Not super uh, high end. This was actually the cheap end of Christian Dior, but this is a very 90s colorway and type of stripe pattern. So um, it's got a little bit of a retro look to it. And again, it probably will only sell for like 40 bucks. And honestly, the Christian Dior name doesn't add anything to it with this. Uh, just a Hawaiian camp shirt, but it's golfing. So I got it because it had the little golfers. Interesting. And then I don't know this brand, KT Golf, but I don't think it's worth anything, you know, anything special. I really just got it for the style, not the brand. But it feels nice. It's not too super cheaply made. I think that name makes it pretty special. KT Golf. Mm-hmm. You're a dork. Um, okay, just a couple more. Uh, vintage, 70s. Look at this collar. Polyester dagger collar in this great 70s retro disco uh, pattern. Nice. And then it's just King's trim. It's You can just tell by the label. It's just an old one. Yeah. It's from the Sears Men's Store. The collar gives away the decade. Yep. The collar and the tag both. Probably like a $50 shirt. Katie grabbed these for me. These don't sell great for me. However, I really liked the, the, pa the pattern. The is pattern cool. is kind of like this big baggy check. These are super vintage. Saks Fifth Avenue. Uh, made in Italy. They're just 100% uh, linen and flax. Made in Italy. Or Mez. Or Mezzano. Or Mezzano. I don't know if that brand is anything. But made in Italy. Vintage Saks Fifth Avenue. And a cool retro pleated pattern front was worth grabbing and they're super lightweight so mm -hmm. i don't even think i paid two dollars for them and then let's see this was a thing that i thought was going to be worth so much money it's really not oh shit actually it's not going to be worth anything i don't think which is probably why someone threw it back. so this is a uh, versace uh, it's actually pronounced pronounced versace uh bag uh, it's a backpack it is genuine there are plenty of them online that you can look for this was actually a giveaway promo with a uh, versace perfume or cologne um it's polyester it's like not uh it's not real leather or anything like that in fact uh it's probably not gonna i'm not gonna list it at all i'll probably i'll just give it to jesse I mean, he can one of his guys can do something with the pack yeah, or something yeah and you know these the straps but i'm not gonna have no. that sewn if it were, if it weren't looking like that, I could get about seventy-five bucks out of it used. Mm -hmm. But there's quite a few of them. So, all right, lesson learned. I, I lost four bucks. It's going to go to Jesse. Um, and then just two more. These are uh, Rock Revival. I don't always pick these up, but I do pick them up when they're in the, from the bins uh, because they're light enough. Blingity bling bling bling. Yeah, I mean it's. It's very overdone and, mm -hmm. and played out and, you know, big star in rock revival and, uh, uh, what are the other ones? I can't think off the top of my head. Miss Me. Nobody's really wearing them anymore. If they are, it's because they're stuck in the 2000s and mm. not in a good way. Women in their 50s that live in Vegas wear them. That's true. That's true. It's pretty sad, actually. Uh, I do not count myself among that. I was wearing them 15 years ago when they were cool. Um, okay, so... And then this I picked up, so vintage, uh, oh crap, this is another one I should have got. All right, well, that's going in the trash. But look how cute it was until it needed to go in the trash. How's the other elbow? Fine. Sorry. It's not worth listing. All right, I'm gonna chuck that. So, that was a bad buy too. This is why, I did try to check everything today. I did throw back quite a few things. That's about it, I did get one, uh, for real, Simba Lion, uh, if he works, he's worth about 50 to 60 bucks. And he's kind of heavy, though. Yeah. If he, came in, really if he came in the box, he was like 150. Yeah, he's really cute, though. He's very cute. And he's in good shape. So I do hope it works. Uh, I've got to replace the batteries and check it out. Yeah. That's it. That's all I got. And it's my turn. Um, I actually had, I feel like, a really good day today. Probably the best of all three days this week. Um, so I am going to show you every piece that I got. Of course, I didn't get a crazy amount. Um, just filled up a Ikea bag. And like I said, I'm almost positive it was 19 pounds. So I got charged for 14. 
which is fine with me. Um, first thing is uh, just a pair of Vans that uh, Vicky grabbed. She thought maybe they might be my size. Of course, they're like a size and a half to two sizes too big, which I'm very sad about because these would have been great to wear around the holidays. Um, a really awesome red plaid. I didn't look these up. Vans don't generally go for a whole lot. It just kind of depends. But I still feel like, I don't know, maybe I can get 30 bucks for them. Who knows? But they're cool. And if not, then I'll give them to somebody. But um, I just love bands. They're one of my favorite kind of uh, brands of shoes. All right. Jumping in, you saw Vicky had gotten a whole bunch of really cool men's shirts. Um, I also got some probably from the same person. Um, this one, we're not entirely sure when it's from the tag. Uh, Vicky thought the tag looked newer. It's this, was it? Bumpka? I don't know how what it is. I can't read it. But uh, there's the tag. But it is made in Korea. It makes us think that it's probably 90s. Um, it's a 100% silk kind of camp shirt. Not quite, not a Hawaiian shirt, you can call it a camp shirt. Um, but it's a really cool kind of like cocktails. Uh, you've got, uh, you got like martinis, you've got slices of orange and lime, um, bottles of champagne, just kind of a really cool um, kind of retro print kind of going on. Um, but I'll probably, I mean, I'll have to look this up. I don't know if it's anything special, but whatever it is, I'll at least list it for like 50 bucks, um, 40, 50 bucks, try to get. Uh, this is a jacket that I think somebody else threw back, probably because it's got like some, some staining. It needs to be washed, but I think it's super cool. It's on this Tri Mountain tag. You see this tag a lot on jackets. It's like, you know, companies that have jackets made. Uh, this is made in Taiwan, ROC. I'd say this is 90s. Um, and it's just a, a windbreaker jacket. It's got the roll up hood right here. But what's really awesome about it is it says, it's got embroidered down the side, Pepsi. Um, the front of it, it's got the Pepsi symbol. It says PBG. I don't know what that stands for. You can see that's pretty dirty. So this is definitely gonna need to be washed. And then the back, fully embroidered. It says Alaska's number one soft drink. Again, it's got the Pepsi um, and the outline of Alaska. So this is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, I'll probably list it for like 70. Hope to get 50 to 70 bucks for it. It's pretty cool. I like it. Next up. I've got a bunch of these now. Um, they're not really moving, but I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that it is summertime and it is literally a bazillion, yes, I said literally a bazillion degrees or at least well over 100. It's gonna hit like 112 today. Um, but I don't mind, I'm gonna keep picking these up because I'm only paying a couple bucks for them and hopefully when it gets to winter time, uh, I might be able to sell it. Plus, guess what? It's pretty much winter time in Australia right now, so I might sell one there. Uh, but Maybe I'll sell a bunch of them when it gets to winter time around here. Um, but it's another one of those um, Fisherman cable knit uh, sweaters. This one is made in British Crown Colony of Hong Kong, um, hand framed and knitted, and it's Deans of Scotland. So I don't know, when did British Crown Colony of Hong Kong change to just Hong Kong? I would say this is at least um, 80s, but Smells very detergent-y, air freshener -y, I don't know. But I'll probably list this for like 100. Like I said, I've got a few of these sitting that, that aren't moving at all, but I feel like once we hit cooler season and it gets into the winter time, I'm hoping that I'll have some really nice sweaters to sell. Sometimes you just gotta sit on that stuff for a while. Um, next up, not sure, really sure why I grabbed this. I just really like the super bright, uh, um, Tie-dye, I know Vicky's like totally over the whole tie-dye thing. There's a lot of really bad tie-dyes, but whenever I see the ones where they're really brightly colored and well done, it is still popular right now. So, and this is in really good condition. It's not vintage. Um, it's this color tone, color your life. And then it's got kind of like a, the, the pyramid thing with the eyeball on the front of it. So I don't know, maybe I'll get $40 for it. We'll see. Like I said, it's, it's, I don't even think it's been washed before. It looks brand new. Um, in really nice condition. I probably should have just thrown that back, but whatever, it was like in the bottom of my bag and I ended up finding a bunch of other really good stuff, so I probably didn't really need it. Next up, I have this, uh, I mean, this Howard Wasden Wildcat sweatshirt. This is probably like a middle school, maybe a high school. It's on this Gildan uh, activewear tag. So assembled in Honduras, so Canadian components. So this is probably 90s. It's gonna be like late 90s, early 2000s. So definitely vintage. 
it's got some wear, but it's really, it's super cute. And, uh, and I like the little paw prints on the back. So I'll probably list this for like 48 bucks. Hope to get 40 to 48 for it. Uh, this is like a very interesting shirt. Um, it's, so the back of it, I mean, I'll have to look it up. I don't, I've never seen the hangover part two. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the hangover part one. Um, I was like, meh, uh, hangover part two, 2011. So that's the back. And then the front has a dog on it. Was there a dog in the hangover part two? I don't know. Is this like a misprint or am I just dumb? And since I haven't seen the movie, I don't know anything. Anyway, it's got a dog on the front and then the back says hangover two. I don't know if this is worth anything. I figured I might as well pick it up for less than a dollar. Um, I mean, what, maybe I can sell it for 20 bucks. I don't know. Who knows? All right. I do really well with um, these kind of sweatshirts, these sweatshirts from like Europe. And this one in particular, I think is super cool. Uh, this is on the Sherry's Best uh, tag right here. This is like an 80s, 90s tag. And uh, it's, a, it's Norway, Viking country, but it's got the really cool Viking ship on it. So I do well, like I said, I, I've sold ones for like Aust Austria, Netherlands, um, and this one's Norway. So I'll probably list this at like 70 and hope to sell it for 50 to $70. Um, and I haven't had a problem getting that for those. Uh, next up, I got these Boy Scouts t-shirts, which, I mean, they don't really move super fast. Maybe I'll list them for like 30 bucks, but they were just in such good shape. They're 90s that I wanted to grab them. Uh, they're one of the, they both have the same thing on them. One's gray, one's white, and one of them actually has a date on it. It says 1996. Um, you can see this Hanes 5050 tag. And it just says, I like the graphic on it. It's Troop 120, Boy Scouts of America, First Presbyterian Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and it's got the eagle on it. Uh, so it's, this is, as far as I can tell, dead stock, 1996. So I felt like it was worth picking up. I'll list it for like 35 bucks. And then this is pretty much the same thing, except it doesn't have the year on it, but it's the same tag. It's got that same tag. It's got the same design on the front, minus the year. So we're gonna say it's 90s as well. So again, I'll probably list these for like 35 bucks. Next up, this one is not quite vintage yet. This is from 2009. It's got some discoloration around the collar. So I'm gonna need to wash it and bleach it um, to hopefully get that yellow off the collar. This is, uh, this is gonna be what a Gildan tag looks like in 2009. Uh, but I picked this up because this is an LSU t-shirt. It's LSU 2009 football new sheriff in town and the back graphic is just super cool so i felt like you know lsu is one of those schools that has some really rabid fans uh, it says 12 most wanted and it lists all these different schools on um, 2008 lsu football so it's just a really cool kind of cartoon graphic on the back so i figured there probably aren't any i mean i'll look and see if there's any listed anywhere but you know this is this is from 14 years ago so the good chance that there are any available or around so i feel like i could safely sell it for 30 to 40 bucks. We'll see. We'll find out. Next up, I have this, uh, this is what's called a, a wedding, I think it's called, a, it's called a wedding shirt, right? Victoria? Yes. He's it's called a wedding shirt. A Cuban wedding shirt. I actually used to buy these and sell them, but it's been many years. Um, this is made in Korea. It's kind of an off-white, and it's the, how you know it's one of those uh, Cuban wedding shirts. It's got the double set of pockets on the front, so you got pockets down low, pockets up high, and then usually is some sort of like you know kind of uh, fanciness going on down it. Um, this is the tag right here. I don't. Vicky says she sells hers all the time, so I'll ask her for help with pricing. But I would imagine I can at least get forty to fifty for it. Um, just a cool shirt, cool style. I like it. All right, next up, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen, sometimes it's like, it's usually like some sort of promotional shirt, and there's some of these that are like around from like the 90s and, and early 2000s, Y2K, but where they would take shirts and they would vacuum seal them into a cube, and so then you'd have to take the wrap off and it would expand and it'd be all like wrinkled up. Well, I found one of those cubes in the bins and I'm like, ooh, what's this? So I opened it up right there, and first I looked at the tag and I was like, oh cool, because it's this is the Anvil tag, and it says, uh, assembled in uh, Nicaragua of US fabric, 
Um, this tag you see in late 90s, early 2000s. I would say this is probably um, early 2000s, but definitely vintage. Super wrinkle, as you can see. I'm gonna have to go ahead and wash it. There's no way I'm gonna try to sell it like this. Um, but I was just really, it's just cool to like find a piece like this that's just been sitting somewhere for the last, you know, 20 plus years and, uh, you know, nobody's, nobody's worn it, nobody's done anything with it. It's got a really cool, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on. Down here it says want to be square. I don't know what that means, but it's kind of a cool all over print. There's kind of a, you can see kind of a face going on right there. I don't entirely know what this is. I'm hoping I'll be able to find something about it. Um, I don't know if it's, it was just a promotional for some company or if it has some deeper meaning, but it definitely needs to be washed. So I really have zero clue what it is or how much I would sell it for. Um, I just thought it was kind of neat because it was like a little time capsule wrapped, shrink wrapped in plastic. All right, more of these men's shirts that uh, I grabbed that Vicky got some of as well. This one does feel a little bit gr grimy as well, needs to be washed. Um, but this is a 90s Gap men's shirt. Let's see, where's it made? Made in Hong Kong. And it's a really cool uh, hunting pattern on it. If you look close, you can get it to, to yeah, you can see the guy with the gun and he's got his hunting dog with him. So it's just all of the patterns all over the entire shirt. Um, I don't really know what these go for, but I'll probably list it for 50 bucks or so. Maybe more, we'll see. Next up, Vicki threw this one to me. This Eddie Bauer. Uh, this is probably late 90s, early 2000s. It's assembled in Costa Rica of USA material. And it's just a really uh, basic kind of heavy shirt what they call it, chamois or whatever. Um, so it's just basic kind of khaki beige color. So probably maybe sell it for like 30 to 40 bucks. Nothing crazy. Next up, I've got this hoodie. I asked Vicki what she thought about it and if she thought it was something that would sell. She said, no, she's got some and they just sit there. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna get it anyway. And then she said, why do you even ask me? And I said, that's a good question, but Basically, uh, it's this Echo Unlimited. The thing is, this used to be pretty big, like back when I was first selling um, streetwear, like 2016, this was selling pretty well. Um, it definitely slowed way down, but you can still find comps. The sell-through, like I looked up zip-up hoodies, the sell-through's probably about like 30, 40%, um, which isn't crazy good, but there are a lot of them selling for, you know, 60 to $80, a decent number of them. And um, so the reason I did grab this one is because it is in really good condition. It doesn't even seem like, I mean, maybe it was worn once or twice. Um, it's the zip up instead of the pullover. I know I prefer a zip up and it's got the nice big spell out um, sewn on Echo Unlimited. So it could be a big mistake, but I don't know. I've been selling Nautica stuff again. So I just want to see if I'm only spending like two, three dollars on this and I can flip it for 50. Let's try it. So, and I do still have that Circus Circus Painters hat that Vicky told me not to get. So I don't know how well I'm doing. Okay, next up, um, one of the best things at the bins is going through other people's rejects. And there was a guy there that I saw was definitely grabbing vintage. And I saw him throw a couple things back. And the first thing I saw was this uh, logo. And I was like, oh yeah. So I think Vicki and I still have agreed that we don't entirely know how to pronounce this, if it's Descent or Descente. I tend to go Descente, I think she does as well, but I don't know. Um, this is made in Singapore. I would say this is probably 80s, possibly into early 90s. Um, it does have a roll up hood. Now this has some staining on it, so I'm gonna have to try and see if I can wash it out. But it's just a really cool jacket. Um, I had picked it up and I saw the stains. I'm like, I'm gonna get it anyway. And the guy saw that I grabbed it and he was really nice and came over and said, yeah, it's got a lot of staining on it. Just so I threw it back and I'm like, yeah, I saw. And I figured it'd be worth trying to get it out since it doesn't, you know, it's a little heavier. So maybe it cost me like four or five bucks. But um, I just really like this brand. And if you remember, I had gotten that uh, Decente jacket that had photographer embroidered on the back of it and I ended up selling it for I think 100 or 125 like a month ago. Um, so we'll see. I like it. 
I'll probably, if I can get the stains that halfway decently out, I might list it for like 100 and hope to get like 70 to 100 for it. But I don't know. Uh, Vicki grabbed this for me. It's a brand new canvas, really heavy duty tote bag. Did you guys know I've been picking up the tote bags? Um, I don't know what John Hardy is. I'm assuming it's like a clothing brand or something. Um, but it's John Hardy but I really like the graphic on it because I'm assuming this is in Hawaii somewhere and you can see you've got uh, mountains and a volcano there. Um, or maybe this is somewhere else, I don't know. Oh no, this might be Philippines. Now that I'm looking closely at it, this might be the Philippines because I'm seeing, um, I don't know, I'll have to look it up guys. I have no idea where this is because uh, I see there's an elephant temple, royal palace, I don't know, I'm sure somebody out there, before I get a chance to research it, will comment down below and tell me, actually look this stuff up and tell me where it is. But still, either way, it looks super cool. And I'm liking, I'm totally digging the canvas bag, so. All right, so the very last uh, rotation before we were gonna go, I saw one of the guys, one of the t-shirt bros, pick this up and was looking at it, and then I saw him kind of throw it back. And all I saw was, I could tell it was a vintage Christmas sweatshirt. And so it's not like, oh, I gotta get that because it's gonna sell for so much money. It's just, you know, I have a little place in my heart for the vintage Christmas sweatshirts, um, even if I have to sit on for a couple of years, which is not great. But anyway, so I saw him look at it and he looked at it and he just kind of tossed it back and I was like, yeah. So I grabbed it and looked at it and then upon further uh, closer inspection, I realized it's super cool because not only is it a vintage Christmas sweatshirt, it's a vintage Smoky Mountains Christmas uh, sweatshirt from Dollywood in 1998. How exciting is that? I'm super stoked. So I don't know if that really adds a whole lot of value to it. It does in my heart, okay? And those of you out there who love Dolly, hopefully you'll see why I'm so excited about it. Am I gonna make $100 on it? Highly doubtful. It probably, maybe I can get 50 for it, I don't know. But who knows, maybe I'll look it up or maybe I'll price it higher and I'll sell it for more. But still, I love me some Dolly, so it just made me happy to get anything associated with her in any way. So, there you go. All right, this next piece, uh, Vicky's really mad at me because in the past, I've generally given her any pieces of uh, th like this. And of course, I'm talking about Hard Rock Cafe. But guys, these are desperate times and desperate times call for desperate measures. And any uh, true vintage t-shirt I can get my hands on that's in good um, shape, and this, is, this appears to be dead stock, I uh, can't help it. Not to mention the fact that this one is Hard Rock Cafe Houston. And you know how we always talk about rodeo stuff and how well it sells. I mean, come on, it's Houston. We've got the rope, we've got the, the buck and bronco, we've got the cowboy. I, I just couldn't do it. I needed, I needed more actual, true, good vintage stuff. I'm buying a lot of mids and mediocre stuff at the bins lately. Um, I'm gonna hang on to what I can. And this is a nice XL made in the USA, single stitch all around. Um, I mean, you know, we talk about hard rock and how it doesn't go for crazy amounts. However, this one, again, it's got the rodeo thing going on. So I'll actually probably list this for 70 and hope to get 50 to 70 for it. Um, we'll see with the, you know, the rodeo part of it, if that really uh, bumps up the price. All right, probably the best piece I got today. Um, so, you know, we've got all the t-shirt bros, they all race in there, they're all going crazy. But, you know, they can only look at so much stuff and they usually go real fast from one bin and then go to another one, go to another one. So I saw like two or three guys go through this, this bin where I got that hard rock t-shirt and they totally missed that one. I grabbed it, threw it over my shoulder and then in the same bin, I looked down, I saw this black t-shirt and at first it was folded up and all I saw was this tag. And I was like, oh cool, that's a vintage t-shirt. So I was excited, you know? And this is like the part where you're like, oh, what's it gonna be when you actually look at the shirt? Is it gonna be good? Is it gonna be blank? Is it gonna be something dumb? And I opened it up and I was super excited because it is a boxing shirt. It is, I don't know if you pronounce it Bowie or Bow. It's Bow versus uh, Holyfield, Repeat or Revenge. This is a 1993 fight at Caesars Palace. Um, this shirt, I need to do a little bit more research, but uh, when I, the one, there's one other one that's listed right now for $120 on eBay. Um, nothing has sold, so I need to go look at Terapeak and actually see if there is a longer history as far as like these ones uh, being sold. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say like, hopefully I can get a minimum of $100 for it. We'll see, because like I said, the other ones just like this is listed for 120. So 
but I was pretty stoked because I grabbed this and it was overlooked by the bros multiple times before I came along. Okay, so that is every single piece that I picked up today. And then I'm gonna show you just a handful of pieces that I picked up uh, day before yesterday when we went. We didn't do a video for that, so there were a few pieces that I thought were kind of cool. I thought I'd show you. Overall, it was not a great haul. Like when we did that day, we were like, should we even film one? We're like, meh, because we said we do try and do like at least two a week. So this will be our second one, and I'll just show you a couple pieces here. Um, there were a bunch of these snack teas, as I call them, uh, and some of them had like the pr the printed tag, but these did not. And so I went ahead and grabbed them. I mean, they're probably, you can see the Gildan tag, they're probably from within the last 10 to 15 years. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but, and I, I don't know when this Three Musketeers came out. I'll probably be able to find out when it came out with this, but Three Musketeers mint with dark chocolate. So I mean, I'll probably just list these for like 20 bucks. I mean, they're not gonna sell for a ton, but I just like the snack teas. There's nothing on the back, um, but I got two of those and like I said, since I got two of them, I think they're both the same size, have the same tag, so I'll just do like one listing and make them like 20 bucks each or something like that. Um, next up, there was, so when we first went in, uh, again, we were like a few minutes late and there had been eight, we walked in and I saw this guy had, that already had a ton of vintage in the bag. There was a woman who found a ton of like wrestling t-shirts. Um, so there had been a bunch of vintage. And so then I was kind of slowly going through the area where they had found all this stuff and being a little bit more careful and picking, picking, picking. And uh, I found a few I, pieces that I think were cool. And this was one of them. This tag right here, this is actually probably from like late 70s, early 80s, this tag. This is a really good condition. Uh, it says, on, there's nothing on the front of it. And then the back of it, it says, the brightest spot in the sky. And on the sleeve, it says, Sun World International Airways. So I'm assuming this is an airline. And then it's got some locations on it. Las Vegas, San Jose, Ontario, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Tucson, Oakland. So just kind of a cool um, old school airlines t-shirt, which I dig. I always like uh, find stuff like that. And of course, single stitch on the bottom. And then this shirt is actually brand new. Not brand new, but new as in current. Uh, you might think it's weird that I picked it up because it's a movie that just came out and it is Cocaine Bear. I did not get this for myself. It's long sleeve. It's got the spell out down the side, uh, one sleeve, Cocaine Bear. Um, but I looked it up and yeah, you know, it's a new movie. There's a bunch of merch out there, a bunch of t-shirts, probably made to print um, crap that's unlicensed. Uh, but I did see comps for the long sleeve. I think this is actually like a legit promo from the movie. And I saw ones going, you know, that had sold for like 35, 40 bucks. So I'm like, I'll grab this to sell for 30 bucks. Um, sounds good to me. All right, this shirt I actually picked up, it was inside out and all I saw was the tag. So I knew it was from the eighties. So of course I grabbed it. And then when that happens, I usually wait till I can get back to my cart. So I'll keep, you know, picking stuff. It just timed out there. Anyway, uh, it'll take me a while to get back to my cart and all I can think is what's on the other side of that shirt? And it's like, it's a mystery, you never know. It's like that boxing tee, it's like, could be anything. Could be anything. Now this isn't crazy exciting and normally I don't pick up anything that has like dad or mom or grandma or whatever on it. But since this is from the 80s, it does say rad dad, okay? So I think that is pretty rad. So I'll probably list it for like 40 bucks. We'll see if it sells, but I mean, come on. Rad dad, how cool is that? All right, last piece. So again, this is another one that I found that area where all the other vintage was. First of all, I have to say, this is the softest, one of the softest t-shirts I have ever felt. It's so soft. Like, you know, you find a bunch of shirts uh, from like the 80s that have that 50-50 poly cotton blend, and this is on a Stedman tag. Um, and you know, some, they're generally softer shirts, but this one right here is like buttery soft. It feels so good. And uh, it's a medium, so it's not a very big shirt, but it's super cool because it is, you can see right here it says Crown, Crown Japan. And then you can see on the back in big print, Crown Japan. Now anyone who's familiar with like vintage electronics, 
know that uh, this is a brand that did a lot of like you know tape recorders and I think that it had radios and little televisions and stuff like that so it is a an electronics company but just the whole crown Japan um, I think I mean I don't know if there's any comps out there but I would probably I'm probably gonna list this like a hundred bucks because it's such a soft uh, soft t-shirt and just like a really cool I could see this like going back to Japan actually um, and uh, it is single stitch so this is probably my favorite piece that I picked up uh, day before yesterday when we went in and it was just fun because this is probably something that maybe you know one of the t-shirt bros might have even seen it and just been like meh what's this this isn't worth picking up because it's not anything hyped or anything that they recognize um, but I'm sure I will make some money on it so and it is my favorite piece all right guys that is it that is everything. Thank you so much. This is gonna be a little bit of a longer video because uh, I showed you some extras. Vicky showed you some extras. And so hopefully uh, I'll get this edited and put up today, Saturday. And if any of the rest of you are stuck in the house like we are because it's so freaking hot, you can hang out in the air conditioning, watch this little video, and I'm gonna let the dogs take this on home. Bye. It's a cave bed, it's a puppy in a cave bed, does she want her belly scratched? It's a cave bed, it's a puppy in a cave bed, does she want her belly scratched? She does. I'll answer that right now, she sure does. Alright, over here we've got Luna, whose birthday was yesterday. She might want to have her belly scratched. It appears that she does as well. Everybody's getting their belly scratched. So if everyone could tell... Luna, a very happy birthday. She would appreciate it. It's a good girl. And then we've got Grizz, who's also in a cave bed. Hi, Grizz. She probably, she might not want her belly scratched, but we'll try. We'll get in there. She likes a little bit. Yeah, you, oh, okay, she does, yep, she says she does want her belly scratched. All right, see you later, guys.